my talk today is, I'm, I'm going to talk to everybody in the room, but I'm going to break it up, all right? And first for the sponsors, for the sponsors that, that sponsored this for at the beginning and the ones that are here now. It, that is incredible that you, you take the time to invest in young people. And to me, that's the number one thing that we all can do as grown-ups, as coaches, as mentors, is to really invest in young people. So to the sponsors, I, I just want to take my hat off to you and let you know that the Mom community is, is happy and uh, proud that, that we have people like you that will sponsor things for high school students to come out and, and shine and, and show all their abilities. So thank you to all the sponsors. So next I want to talk to the administrators and I want to tell you just another thank you. Um, Seven years ago, I got the job at Monmouth and was blessed by Dr. Marilyn McNeil. And when she picked me, I wasn't even sure. I, I always thought I wanted to be a head coach. I knew the time was getting closer. But then when, when Dr. McNeil picked me at Monmouth, I, I, I didn't expect to get such a big time job when I got that job. Okay, when I got the Monmouth job, I was shooting for, for lower level jobs. And it was, was one of the biggest thrills in my life when she picked me. And not only did she pick me, she put a lot of support behind me, okay? I get a lot of credit for a lot of things, but without Dr. McNeil's support, I would not still be the basketball coach. When I started off, we lost 20 games three years in a row. I'm sure a lot of people are like, see, we shouldn't have picked him. But because we, we tried to build a program she understood what we were trying to do. And the part that we fixed first was the academic side. And because we fixed the academic side, because we had four guys ineligible when we got here, and we graduated those kids, and she saw the level of student that we were getting, after my third year of losing 20 games in a row, or not in a row, but losing 20 games, she came to me before the start of my fourth year. <coughs> And when, you, when your boss comes in and you lost 20 games, 20 games, 20 games, and you were supposed to change it and all these great things were coming, and you lost 60 games in three years, and your boss comes in to start the fourth year, I, my, my main man, Rick Callahan, over here, as soon as she walked in, I said, okay, Ricky, here we go. <laughs> and thinking it was probably going to be bad news. Okay, maybe I was getting fired then. Maybe I was going to be told, hey, if you don't get a certain amount of wins this year, you're going to be fired. And I'm a big boy. I signed up for what I signed up for. And I thought we were working hard, and I thought we were making small improvements, but they weren't big enough yet. They weren't big enough for the job that I was hired for. And when she walked in and said, can I speak to you, we walked out in the hallway. And she said, King, I don't know if this is the right time to do this or not. And I, I just kind of bent over and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm getting ready to get fired. And she said, I love what you're doing. And I took a step back again and she said, I just want you to know I love what you're doing. I see the improvements in the academic side. King, you've turned that around already in a short period of time. And she really didn't talk about basketball. Okay, she, I was brought here to change basketball, but after the third year, she didn't talk about it at all. And what she told me was she was so proud of what we had done so far that she was going to re-up my contract to five years. Well, since she re-upped my contract, we won 18 games, we won 28 games, and then we won 27 games. And that's a direct correlation to her having faith in me seeing that it was bigger than just basketball. It was bigger than just basketball. And that's why I want to tell the administrators, sometimes you have a coach, don't just go on to wins and losses. See the impact he's having in your program. And then be the person that's strong enough to stand there with that person if you believe in them enough. Stay strong with that person if they are helping the young people like you wanted them to when, they, when you hired them. Stay with them if you see a, a energy that they're bringing to the program that wasn't there before. Stay with them because a lot of coaches get fired because of the wins and losses. And then the next guy comes in 
he didn't do any of the work, but now the program is in a better place, and that guy comes in and wins 25 games and wins 27 games and then leaves your program <laughs> for a bigger and better program. I feel like I have the best boss in the world, and it's, it did it all way, it didn't start the way she thought it was going to start. So administrators, you have a, such an amazing job. Please take the time to, to know your coaches and make sure before we pull the trigger on letting them go, make sure you check on with the kids. Make sure you check with the community and just know that they're working extremely hard for you. And if you see progress, maybe give them a little bit of a chance. And I, I, I think you'll see your program go to the levels that you want it to go to. So thank you to the, to the administrator. And now to, to the, the students in, in the room and the athletes in the room. I, I just want to tell you I'm so proud of you. All right? I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of all your accomplishments to this point. I'm so proud that you made it through to get to high school athletics. Okay? I'm just proud of you. And I want to, I, I have a 16 year old now and I look out at you and when I first took the job he was in the fifth grade and I had some time before I had to deal with teenage stuff, okay? When I was your age, being a teenager was a lot easier. It was a lot easier. You, you only had to deal with people that were really right from your neighborhood. Your life wasn't on a national scale when I was a kid. It was easy being a kid. It, it, it truly was. I tried to mess it up a few times, but it was really easy being a kid. I had to wake up, do a couple of chores that my dad made me do, then I had to go to school, I had to do well in school, and then I got to do what was the, the most important thing to me, play sports, okay? And then, because of my family situation, after sports, I had to get a job. Okay, and I had to, I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods, the first Dick's in the United States, and I worked in the sneaker department. I thought I was real cool. I walked around like, yeah, I'm, I'm like the best sneaker guy ever. Come on in. I used to try to meet girls while I was at work and be like, hey, what kind of shoes do you need? You know, so I'd maybe give me a ride after work, maybe we can go home, go to the gym or something, but, because I didn't have a car. All right, so I might try to sell you shoes and, and also might ask you on a date or something like that, you know, but it was most of the people that I grew up with. So you knew everybody, okay? You knew everybody. Even in our high school, our town, there was two high schools, they closed them, and they became one high school. So it was Binghamton High School. So we all grew up together, we went to church together when we were little kids, and, and it, was, it was just a group of people that you, you kind of grew with, your parents knew each other, uh, you, older brothers hung out, older sisters, everybody was, it was a small group that you, you had to be, had to impress. It was just a small group, and it was your friends. And some of the guys that didn't like you, or the girls that didn't like you, because it was, they were from the other school, and you might have beat them in sports, you might have been at a party and tried to be too cool for them, and they might not have liked you for a little while, but usually you're from the same area, you could get through that. Well now, because of these phones, being a teenager is really, really hard. Being a teenager is really hard. And I wanted to take this time just to tell you that you have great people around you that want to help you through this time. You have great people. You have your parents, you have your siblings, you have your friends. Um, you have your coaches, you have teachers. You have people, you have the coach and mom. Because I'm, I'm dealing with a 16 year old right now and I'm seeing just how hard it is. And then his dad, his dad thinks he's so unreasonable. So I'm extra, extra hard on my son. When the things that I say to him that I want him to do, I want him to be a good kid. I want him to be a good student. I want him to do well outside of sports. Obviously, I want him to do well in sports. I want him to be nice to his mom when he comes home. I want him to be a good big brother. I don't really want him to be the party guy. I want him to deal with that as he gets older because his dad had some problems with that. So all the things I'm asking him to do, he's really doing a great job. He, he really, truly is doing a great job. But then he comes home and his mean dad 
Just jumps on them about everything. Why are your shoulders slumped? You didn't clean your room. How come your bed's not made? What's going on with you? You never seem happy. What, why is this? Why is that? And really, I just want to talk to him more. I just want him to lean on me. Okay? So I tell you this, young people, because I know how hard it is. And while you're dealing with it, you probably think your parents are just as unreasonable as my son thinks I am. And I think I'm like the most easygoing parent ever. But somewhere there's, there's, there's a breakdown between me and my son. And we're not talking as much. And it's having a, a major impact on his dad. He seems to be bouncing back a lot better. Okay? So when you're dealing with all these hard things of being a teenager, okay, social media puts everything on Front Street, everything. If you got a pimple today, everybody's going to put it on Instagram. We go, you had a pimple today. Okay, if you had a bad day, everybody in the world, and then it might go viral. And then you have to worry about all these things. All of these things that truly, that truly, you have people right next to you that will help you throw. You have, like I said, you have your friends. You have coaches. I know coach seems like he's mean and he's always on you. But he's a coach because, or, or she's a coach because they wanted to help young people. I became a coach because I thought I dealt with young people well. That was the whole reason. It wasn't because I thought I could get rich. It wasn't because I thought, oh, I was a good basketball player, I can do this. When I was your age, I enjoyed working with kids that were younger. I enjoyed taking what I had learned from coaches because I got to go around a lot of great coaches. And I had a lot of great mentors. And a lot of people didn't have those same mentors as me or didn't have the same outlets that I had. So I always wanted to be around younger people and try to show them. Okay, I was from a poor family. We didn't have much. But you can make something of yourself. Okay, if you keep believing, if you keep working hard, you can accomplish anything, anything you want to accomplish. And that's why I got into coaching. And then a lot of times if you see me coach, I'm an energetic guy. I like to get going. I like to talk. I, I think I'm cool. I think I can relate to young people. All right, but sometimes when I'm coaching, if you see my face, you would think I was the meanest coach in the world. Sometimes my guys think that, and then that makes them think that maybe I can't go to coach. Well, you can always go to your coach because, one, they love you, okay? They really care about you, not just you, everybody at your school, okay? They would not be in this profession if they weren't into helping young people succeed. And then you get to be a part of, of a short conference that, yes, uh, the Christmas tournaments are going away in, in high school basketball. But this one's getting stronger. And it's because of the people that are around the tournament. Okay, you are very, very fortunate that you live in this area and you have the grown-ups that you have that have been doing it for years. They've been doing it before you even thought about, before you were even a person. They've been doing this, helping short kids go out into the world and succeed. So you have so many people, you have so many people right, right next to you that want to help you. Okay, that's the part where I think young people do not be afraid to ask for help. Okay, I'm, I'm a, the coach at Monmouth and we started off poorly three years, six, seven years ago, then we got real hot, okay? So when you're, when you're losing a lot, everybody says you're getting fired and you're not good at your job. And I have a very public job. My job is very, very public. And when you don't win, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to be outside. I feel, man, I lost 60 games. I might not even be good at my job, okay? And everybody thinks you have to do it by yourself. Well, this was my first time being a head coach. I was great at being an assistant coach. I did that really, really well. I had a whole bunch of different schools. I could really relate to the kids. I always got them to move the way I needed them to move. Well, then I became a head coach and that changed. I didn't relate to them as well. 
Okay? Just because of the seed, I wasn't, I, I didn't feel like I was doing my job well enough. All right? And I was the type of person as an athlete to think, I can get through this. I can do it by myself. Well, I couldn't do it by myself. I needed people like Rick Callahan. I needed Dr. McNeil to be in my corner and just tell me, just to say, you're doing a good job. I feel like I'm a tough guy, but I needed my boss to say, you're doing a good job. I needed to reach out to her and say, Marilyn, I'm doing everything I think is the right thing, and right now we're still falling short. I needed Coach Callahan to look me in my face and say, King, you're good at this. You're good at this. Okay, keep doing the things that you're doing. We're making improvements. But I'm a guy, if you don't win, how could you, you're not making improvements. We're not winning, Ricky. Okay, so at a lot later age than you, I realized nobody can do it by themselves. Okay, being a teenager is hard. Nobody can do it by themselves. When you, when your parents were young, because sometimes you might think they're not that cool anymore, Okay? This is what I tell my son. I was super, super cool before he got here. <laughs> I was one of the coolest guys going all around, anywhere I went. People would say I was really cool. Then all of a sudden I have a son and then another one. And now in my own house, in my own house, he, they don't think I'm that cool anymore. So then my next thing to him is, I was so cool, your mom picked me. <laughs> your mom wanted to date me. So I had to be a little bit cool, son. Okay? I tell you all these things because I want you to know you are not alone. Okay? You are not alone. And a lot of times when you're the athletes, everybody likes the athletes, so they put you up here. And you might be dealing with something that most people would say, well, sh that person can't be dealing with anything that's hard to deal with. They have the greatest deal going ever. Look at them, they're really good looking, they're popular. They do well at sports, everybody likes them. Well, you might be dealing with some things that you need some help with. Please, all the young people in the room, and the older people too, ask for help. Ask, tell your friend, hey, I'm struggling with something. Tell your, your coach, tell your principal, tell an administrator, you need some help. I promise you, I promise you, it will continue to get better. And just remember, you are a young person. Enjoy this journey. All right? I tell, I'm talking about my son. Some of y'all might know him. He's putting too much pressure on himself during this journey, which is one of the best times of your life. Okay? When you get older, you got to worry about all kinds. You got to worry about your kids not thinking you're cool. You got to worry about if you're good at your job. There's all kinds of things that, that you worry about once you're out of high school and once you're out of college. Please, enjoy this journey. Have fun with the people that want to have fun with you. The people that don't want to have fun with you, maybe they'll go find a friend that they can have fun with. All right? Please, reach out, get help, ask for help, and enjoy this journey. If there's ever anything that I can do to help you, I always will. And then one last thing, I always like to, to find out what kind of room I'm in. Was everybody happy that Rutgers won? <laughs> On Saturday. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a seat hall room then. All right, so since we have a seat hall room, they're doing really well too. Let's make this a Monmouth room. Let's start making the Shore Conference a Monmouth Conference. <coughs> All right, a monument conference. Our sports are doing extremely, extremely well. Right now, right now our basketball team isn't doing as well, and it's because of the coach, okay? And I'm not even joking. I've, I've been way too hard on my team. I have a new group of guys, and I'm the type of coach that gives you a lot of room. I give you room to be yourself. I give you room to grow on the court. And this group needed a little bit more structure and with giving them so much room, when we were failing, I was on them too much. And, and I'm, I'm working extremely hard to get it back right now, okay? Coaches, if you've made a mistake with your team, it helps the kids if you admit that mistake, okay? I've been too hard on these kids this year. I'm not gonna stop being hard on them because 
we need to be tougher in some areas. But I have to choose my words wiser as their coach. They're looking to me for strength. They're looking to me to help them have confidence. And the way I've done it so far has, has beat up their confidence a little bit more than I probably should have. Okay? Always be willing to, to admit that you made a mistake. And if you mistake on the side of just trying to get them better, you'll recover faster. Okay? But admit to the kids. I tell my team all the time, I blew that one, guys. All right? I did some things in games this year I've never done. Okay, we lost on the tip out because I fouled when we were up three. I've never done that before. I've never fouled up three. Well, I fouled up three and it, it had a, a major impact on costing us the game. Okay, that was a mistake. My kids weren't ready to do that. All right, and I have to look in the mirror and be a man about it and say, we hadn't practiced that enough. We've gone over it, but we haven't practiced it enough. I had young guys in the game that probably could have put an older guy in the game and we would have got the rebound, okay? So admit to, the, to your players, you made a mistake, and then get right back to work. I thank you for this time. Um, I'm always excited about the Shore Conference. Uh, we have some guys on our team now. It's taking some time to get guys. Um, we have Louie and Dan right now. Um, we've missed on a bunch of guys. We've missed on a, another guy this year, but we'll be, we'll be out there watching you. We continue to come to games and enjoy this journey that you're on. And if it's not a Rutgers RC and Hall room, let's make it a Monmouth room. Go Hawks.